Old Witch Ibaba controls you by stealing your name. If you completely forget it, you'll never find your way home. Your name belongs to me now. Ten-year-old Chihiro is moving, leaving her friends and life behind. On the way to their new destination, her family stumbles upon a seemingly abandoned theme park, until the sun sets, transforming the village into a spirit world. Trapped, Chihiro must find work at the spirit's bathhouse, serving all sorts of specters and mystical creatures, until she can find a way to save her parents and return to the human world. So, with Spirited Away being possibly the most, like, ubiquitous anime film ever, it feels kind of weird to even ask, what do you think of it? <laughs> yeah, um, a few things right off the bat. Visually, this is going to look a lot different than previous home theaters. I'm only going to use clips when it's absolutely necessary to use them, just because Ghibli is the reason I don't have a YouTube channel anymore. And I know there is no way on one Ghibli film we can make a 30-ish minute long video and have them not strike it if we constantly have clips playing on screen. There's just no way that won't happen. So I'm sorry. I do know we, we do have plans to make a Ghibli video in the future. Yeah, a proper Ghibli video. Right, Jack? Yep. Yeah, on, on what I, I believe is both of our favorite film from them. Mononoke? Yeah, Mononoke, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm going to try to slide and pony at the last second like, no, I believe. <laughs> I, I will take my two weeks vacation, sir. <laughs> and um, also, we're not going to be ending this video by asking, so Jack, do you, do you like the film? Do you want to recommend Spirited Away? Because, yeah, it's Spirited Away. This is not the film to ask those questions with. We have Basically, two questions here we're going to try to answer. What was it like to return to a film that neither one of us have seen in years? And why is this film so revered? Even amongst Miyazaki's other works, why is this the one? Why is this the standout for many people in his collection? So let's do the former first. Jack, you've not watched this film since 2014, right? 2013, actually. Uh, Ooh. So... Spirited Away was the very first anime that I ever watched, um, and uh, my oldest sister was taking a foreign films uh, studies class in college, and uh, in October of 2013, right around Halloween, um, I visited her uh, at her university, and uh, they had watched Spirited Away in her class. Um, and, and she really loved it and wanted to show it to me as well. So uh, one of the days I was the, one of the nights I was there, we sat down and, and watched the movie. And uh, let's just say I have not looked back <laughs> ever since um, that 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 to think that one night caused an entire YouTube channel to happen. Exactly. Would I be if it was not for that, would I even be sitting here having this conversation with you? Yeah, <laughs> most weird, likely but not. Butterfly effect. That's weird. Yeah, that's some, that's some deep stuff. If you think about it. Um, for me, though, I have not viewed this film since Halloween 2015. Uh, that was actually, the, this is actually one of the last Miyazaki films I watched. And I remember at the time thinking it was boring. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I came off like Princess Mononoke, and even Porco Rosso has some action. Castle of the Sky's got action. nasca has got action. Like, then I got to this one at the end. I'm like, what's, when's anything going to happen? <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah, that's... I remember thinking that my first time around. I'm like, okay, this is probably something here I'm not seeing. That is the interesting thing about Spirited Away is, you know, that um, a lot of, you know, a lot of Miyazaki's movies are built around their messaging. You know, they have a core idea or core theme that uh, he's trying to explore. You know, Mononoke really stands out in that regard, um, as well as some of some of his earlier work, too, like uh, Nausicaa. Um, you know, they also have uh, more like slice of lifey um, type type features like Kiki's Delivery Service stands out. Um, Totoro as well, and Ponyo, mm -hmm. which this is like perfectly in the middle of both of those two styles. Like it's not action oriented like the bigger ones, and it's not basically completely slice of life. It's like that weird like what's it called the circle one, the Venn diagram. Yes, yeah, it's that perfect little like center point. That's where this is. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. No, and it's 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 not exactly a conflict driven film. It's it's far more experiential. Uh, and the way that it's it's driven by like these little vignettes uh, looking into the the day to day experiences um, of this bathhouse and of Chihiro working in it uh, that kind of guide you through the film rather than like the, the overarching plot structure. Yeah, there's not really any forward momentum in terms of Chihiro solving that issue until the last 10 minutes of the film. 
Mm -hmm. Um, And so everything in between is more just about like Chihiro's experience of this fantastical place that she's now found herself in. Yeah. So, okay, let's start. Let's go back to the beginning for a little bit here. You haven't seen this film in seven years. You're watching it for the first time. One Summer's Day starts playing. It's a nice melody. You comment on the card. What are your first what are your first impressions coming back to this? Man, the sheer nostalgia uh, of, list, of of just that opening scene with One Summer's Day. Um, I mean, that's the type of track that I think would make anyone feel nostalgic the first time they ever hear it. Like, even divorced yeah. from my own personal feelings to the work itself, like, it just has that, that, like, that bittersweet, like, melancholic yearning for, like, childhood. That, like, that, that, that's what it sounds like to me, just on its own. Um and that's kind of the purpose it serves in the film. Uh, yeah, but I know, Ch- Chihiro is basically, she left her whole world behind. She left, left all her friends, her whole, everything she's known up to this point in her life. Mm-hmm. And she is feeling that. And we get that instantly before she even says a word. Um, that, that, that is one thing I do really like about uh, this movie is how, how quickly it just gets right into the, the meat of, of the story. Um, I will say, I had that reaction as well, followed up immediately by... These parents are terrible <laughs> watching this film. Because, like, Chihiro's just in the back, no seatbelt. She's got, she's holding roses. Those are thorns. She's bouncing around. Those are going to hit her. Like, yep. not listening to a word she says. She's scared. Like, I'm not saying they should have been turned into pigs, but, like, maybe, I don't know. I don't know. They, 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 they weren't innocent. They're not innocent parents. <laughs> yeah, I think that, okay, so every with the parents, like, everything after the point that they cross the river and, like, go to that restaurant and stuff, I feel like... There's probably some sort of, like, enchantment that you Baba's put on it that, like, draws nah. people to it and, like, causes <laughs> them to lose all sense of, you know, like, uh, a con- self-control. So, like, no, I can, I I just, can excuse I just everything after that, but you're right. Before they get to the tunnel, they're done. <laughs> I just think they're selfish gluttons and they're like, ah, screw whatever's gonna eat this. I don't, like, it's gonna be someone else. It's gonna be someone that's, like, this is gonna be, like, a birthday party for some kid. Like, this whole thing set up and you know, some catering and you're just like, screw it, it's mine. <laughs> they, they all left. I will say, I feel like the one thing from this movie that, like, people talk about that, like, as a, as a kid might have, like, given them nightmares or whatever, like, spooked them, what, is no face. But for me, especially if I had watched this when I was, like, five instead of, like, 15, uh, it's the pig scene. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would have freaked no, me out. That, that is some serious body horror. <laughs> you know, coming back to this film after so long, it it was such an interesting experience because uh, seven years is a long time. And in those seven years, I've now watched hundreds of anime. Um, so I was, I was if, really if curious. To, if you had to give it a number, let's just 200. It's been 200 anime. Well, I have an Annie list and I haven't updated in a while, but it's like over, it's over 300 for sure. It's like, so when you Damn. include the anime I've watched this year, <laughs> all, all three of them, 300, <laughs> 300 and two. <laughs> Uh, no, it, it's, um, I think my annual list is over 350, something like that. Okay. I don't, I don't have one in general, but I'd say that I'm not far behind if I'm not past you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, we're probably, probably around similar. Um, but so yeah, that's, that's a lot of experience in this medium. Uh, and I mean, I know from my own experience with other works that, uh, my tastes have changed significantly since I first started watching anime. Uh, my favorites list in 2015 versus 2020, uh, there's a lot, uh, don't don't look the same. That's for sure. Um, as soon, basically, as soon as this movie started, I was instantly in love with it again. You know, I was nostalgic, but up to the point where we got to Haku, his introduction, and basically the second the the lights go down or the sun goes down, and we basically start seeing the ghosts and we start getting into actually the more proper uh, what this world is. I fell in love again with this film. There's something about that one sequence when basically Chihiro is running through the food court, or whatever you're supposed to call that, and she's running down. You're just seeing, like, these shapeless, formless silhouettes of creatures just, like, walking around. She's running around the lights, the lighting, the coloring, and basically she thinks she's going to run back to the car, and from that point, I don't know, but like she knows, like, that's a place she does know and recognizes. Goes there, oh no, there's now a giant river here, and she looks across the river, and there's, like, this whole other town now that just appeared out of nowhere. Their entrance is a whole other thing. And just that one sequence in particular, I think, is just so well done. It's not even done in a way that's meant to be, like, terrifying. It's just, yeah, this is a world you don't recognize. This is something you have been thrust into a place you don't get. No one here is trying to hurt you, except for maybe one person. And that's under, under, like, depending on how you read it. But this is just a world going on its thing. It's just, it's terrifying to her. She doesn't know what to do. 
I love how we are basically put in her position and basically are seeing this world through her lens. Right. It, it's it's a moment of magic, really. You know. Yes. Um, I can. Yeah, actually, I would I would generally say I've never felt immersed like that. Even in any of even in Miyazaki's other works, I can't say there's been like one scene in any of his works that gave me that reaction that quickly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, that, that's a, that's still a good example. The, the only other thing that kind of would jump out to me would be um, early on um, in Princess Mononoke, the um, God, no, leaving the, leaving leaving the town and basically kind of like riding yeah. up the hill. What's, what's his name yeah. again? Son. Ashitaka. And Ashitaka, yeah. Yeah, when yeah. Uh, when Ashitaka leaves the town uh, and is like riding through the um, countryside and like the, all the landscapes, and you come in with that incredible Joe Hisaishi score, uh, which is one another one of my favorite tracks of his. That that moment is kind of gives that same feeling. I wish we could do a video on him and not be copyright strike to hell. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way we can. I can play it probably softly in the background right now so you can get the idea, but like, that's it. That's all you're getting from us. Yeah, I mean, and. For one of anime's most legendary composers, uh, Spirited Away is possibly his most recognized oh, soundtrack. It, it, um, I mean, it's it's like One Summer's Day is, is probably, I would say, the theme of Studio Ghibli. <laughs> maybe there's a, there's one track from Castle in the Sky that maybe because how, how early on it started, but like this is the the definitive one. Mm-hmm. This yeah. is the standout right here. Yeah, and again, his work here is is just incredible. Um, the way that the way that the music is composed to every scene and like the actual actions, how actions on screen are conveyed through the music itself. Um, it, it, fe- it felt almost like Fantasia to me where like you have this, where, where the same story is both being told through the music and through the animation together. Um, yeah. There's so many like little moments like that. Yeah. But um, okay, let's fast forward here a little bit. Basically, Chihiro parents return to the pigs. She's stuck here. Haku is basically trying to help her um, basically not die, essentially. Mm-hmm. And so, series of events, we basically meet Yubaba for the first time. Which, I'd say, I love her design so much. Yeah, it's horrific. <laughs> yeah, she's just basically a head with a tiny body. <laughs> a, and it's just, a huge head. Wrinkly yeah, her and eye like, is, awful. <laughs> her high is basically the size of her torso, of yeah. Jiro's torso. And I just, I love that design. I love that introduction so much. Um, but basically, she gets a job working at the bathhouse. As long as she works there, she basically doesn't get turned into a pig herself. And it gives, basically buys her time to essentially find a way to get her parents back. Um, one thing about early on is basically Chihiro is like navigating her way through the bathhouse. And one thing I completely forgot about, and like I was just shocked so much while watching this film, was how many tiny scenes there are just like, other places in the bathhouse that we never see again, but they show us so like, okay, here's how many floors there are, here's how everything works, here's where the baths are, here's where the food is, here's where this, here's where this. And most of this film takes place there, and like I could basically map out in my head everything perfectly. I knew where everyone was. But this is where the people sleep, it's for this. And some of those things were done with like just a few seconds and no words. Mm-hmm. Like I guess I know shocker, Miyazaki is an excellent storyteller, but like I was just shocked at, like, I forgot all of this. This is, like, completely new to me again. No two shots of the bathhouse are the same. Yeah. Which is shocking, because I thought, like, I, I'm sure I saw the same scenes over and over again, like, at least the backgrounds. Like, no, they never use the same angle. Mm-hmm. Except it, for maybe, like, during a running sequence, but then the, at that point, your, your attention's not on that. You're on the, basically, the action. Yeah, it really adds to that, like, fantastical sense uh, that the world has. Um, yeah. it, one scene I love that I think really exemplifies, you know, the bulk of the movie is is uh, really her first scene in the bathhouse um, down in the broiler room uh, where there's this like extended like felt like 10 minute sequence where she's just like playing with these like little enchanted pieces of coal <laughs> or soot uh, carrying yeah. coal. And it's it's just this like little moment of whimsy uh, that the, the film takes the time to like you know, just have fun with, um, that I think, like, there, there's all kinds of sequences like that throughout the film where, um, Chihiro is just having an experience with some creatures or some, you know, uh, something that's at the bathhouse, uh, that doesn't necessarily, like, drive the, you know, narrative forward, um, in terms of its conflict, but what it does do is 
add to this world and, and, and atmosphere um, and fill it in. You mentioned, we're going to go back and forth, I feel, but like when you mentioned like when they first get to the boiler room, when we first see uh, Kamanchi for the first time, uh, big, just spider-like humanoid, you know, he's got the big old giant mustache beard. Yeah, he looks on. like Eggman, his face. Yeah, I mean. you know, <laughs> he, he looks, he looks like he's supposed to be a villain. Yeah. But he's, ge- but he's genuinely sweet. He's like, yeah, I'm just trying to do my job. And mm-hmm. I'm like, look, you know, you can't do it here, but like, I don't know, I don't want you to die. I'm not a monster. I just have multiple arms. Yep. You know, it just that's kind of like set the tone for everything else in the bath. I was like, yeah, you have like turnip spirits. You got slime, uh, swamp monsters. You got people who eat people who look kind of like toads or maybe they're humans. Or I don't know. It's just we have no idea how this thing works. But like, they're not monsters. They're just kind of like they're just us. Just look different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I really liked how that was just like, yeah, don't be scared. Just accept this is how it is. Exactly. Yeah. Except for except for the capitalist on top. You gotta always be scared of them. They're trying to make a profit <laughs> off you. You gotta be scared of the system, not the people. Yeah, you you Baba's the the one. Well, the other person I would be scared of is the baby, but even he even even he becomes uh Yeah. Oh he's he's born into it. He's born to that top one percent, <laughs> Jack. That's what you gotta be scared of. You gotta be scared of classism. Yeah. That, that that's Miyazaki's big take. <laughs> <laughs> that's right even spirit away manages to squeeze just a little drop of that in there right <laughs> yeah yeah like the uh like the whole thing with the stink spirit it's the whole metaphor for like the planet and pollution and how it's being damaged yubaba doesn't care at all she's still making a profit she just wants it out of there but like the second she can make a bigger profit everyone's gonna work on it everyone's gonna be like oh yeah no this is the most important thing but yubaba gets to keep all the money all the profit off that because that's because that's all she cares about Means like you like politics. <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, another thing I think that really stands out about Spirited Away is all of the stories we don't see, you know, yeah. where we, we catch a glimpse of all these things going on in the background uh, that we never expound on anymore, but that we can just, you know, we get that like little couple seconds and, you know, it makes you think, you know, I wonder what, what's going on with. Uh, over there what's going on with that person and there's it's it's a world that's really alive um mm-hmm. you know you kind of touched on it with uh, uh the first scene where chihiro is uh transported to the spirit world and like um there's the town off in the distance and the ferry coming over yeah. um we have no idea what's in that other town but mm-hmm. it's there yep and there's people coming here and they're from that town so maybe it's like i don't know where the ghosts park their cars and they're taking the ferry over i don't know maybe they have cars yeah maybe oh ghost cars one of the most famous scenes uh, in the film, too, is uh, later on in the in the movie where they uh, go on the train and are taking the train out uh, mm-hmm. beyond the bathhouse throughout the spirit world. Yeah. De- uh, deep into some unknown direction, mm-hmm. just on a whim. Yeah. And I mean, and... for one, you're already in this like little it already puts you in this like magical space where you're literally on a train that's like it feels like it's floating on water, you know, um, and you just you see all these light you see lights off in the distance you pass the specter of somebody just waiting at a bus stop. Um, you see the one house just randomly there, just a house. In the middle of this spirit ocean, just yeah. there. Also, tiny touch about that whole scene. In the beginning, when Chihiro's running, they are formless blobs. But by this point, basically, Chihiro could see them more as like humanoid with almost like suits and ties and dresses. They're still silhouettes, but like this world is not terrifying to her as it was at the beginning. She's become like, okay, no, these are people, probably workers, probably going about their life, probably kids as well. I-, I like that. It's never said, but it's essentially, this world isn't scary anymore. It's like our world, just with more colorful creatures in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one another shot that really stood out to me in that sequence uh, was when the train comes to a stop and a lot of the spirits on board get off and like um, head into this like tunnel beneath the water. Um, and the shot kind of hangs on the, the specter of this uh, girl who looks like about Chihiro's height, you know, and probably about her age. Um, and it's just like that sort of like juxt- juxtaposition of, of the life and story of this other person that's just looks just like our protagonist that we're not seeing. Yet. Uh, it's, it's such a it's such a small thing that fills out the, the film and the world so beautifully. There are so like that's. That's his film in a nutshell. Small things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, so I, I, I think uh, I think it's very fitting then that the film kind of bookends itself, um, where with Chihiro now leaving the spirit world, 
that was this scary, frightening place to her and became this pla- this source of comfort where she'd formed relationships and, and met people that, that she'd come to, to feel fondness for and to even love, like Haku. Uh, and now... Actually, can, can we talk about their relationship real quick? Sure. Before we, before we get to the ending. Because I love it. it. It's so sweet. It's... It's what I. It's the relationship I wish Ponyo had, and that's why I hate that film because they focus so much like, oh, it's love, it's this. Like, no, they're just. You're gonna close. have to they're answer. You're gonna have to answer in the comments <laughs> to all the Ponyo stands. <laughs> Look, everyone knows I hate that film. That's I think true. it's that's terrible. a well-known take. I, the relation. I don't think the think relationship that's the first is one of the said that take. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. No, I think Ponyo is a bad film. It's Miyazaki's bad film. Um, but yeah, no, I just I love how. It's just because, like, yeah, I don't want you to hurt. That's the entire relationship. It's not built on this like concept of love or like deep bonds. It's just like I want. I don't want you to hurt. I don't want you to become me. I'm stuck here. I want you to be able to like do what you want to do. And and then Chihiro uh, also ultimately returns that too, where yeah, she tries but, to save him. Yeah, and just again, a bunch of little scenes. You got the scene of them like hiding behind the rose bushes. You got the scene and all him like helping wipe off the tears. You got like oh, I'm trying to give you a medicine. Just all these like. It's just the basis of humanity, even if it's even if it's basically a dragon. It's like, I just loved that like compassion so much. It was just the purest little thing. It's just pure innocence. Like, that's that's this film. I love it so much. Mm-hmm. Um, but so yeah. also, oh go ahead. Oh sorry, no no go go go. So yeah, and you know ultimately in the end, uh, Chihiro uh, has to re- has to leave the spirit world and return to the human world, and that means leaving Haku behind, um, e- even as she's just now found. Uh, found out about their history together and whatnot uh but it's very fitting then that you know th- that's how the film started with chihiro leaving her life leaving the world that she was comfortable in behind uh and going into this new place is, that, that's scary to her um and at the end of the film now she has to do the same thing only she's gr- she's come to be able to face forward in entering this new frontier uh, and it's, I mean, it's, it's very much just, you know, change is a part of life. Like that's very, that's at the core of this film is about dealing with change and learning to, uh, learning to accept l- it, accept it, accept the fact that you're going to have to let go of things and, and mo- as you move forward, um, and finding comfort in what you can and, and allowing that to happen. Um, yeah, this film is surprisingly really quiet. When you, when you actually go back and listen to it and as a whole, it's there's so many scenes that just like the main story is told just through the images. And I love that. Um, but yeah, no, it's it is a story about basically change is OK. And it's basically you, you know, not saying you always have to like it out the, right off the bat, but like, no, it's not, nothing is ever bad until you unless you make it bad. I know and that's the whole thing with when it comes to no name, where it's basically like this is a person who decided, yeah, I'm just going to basically be, you know, not accept this. I just want things to be a certain way. I want basically uh, Chihiro here. I want to do this, this. If I don't like it, I'm going to basically destroy the entire place. When you're okay, you know, going with things and you're okay with basically learning new experiences, his, his life became better. And so many things. I know with Lynn, I know in the bathhouse, basically hates humans. The second basically she realized, oh, this kid ain't half bad. Like, oh yeah, I'm going to become best friends with you. Also, she's voiced by Meg from Hercules. Oh, in the dub? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, you you you're watching it sub? I this time I watched it subbed. So okay. Actually, a yeah. fun fact uh, is that I'm um, thinking of the dub. So the first time I ever watched Spirited Away was the dub, and the voice actress who plays um, Chihiro in the dub, I think her name is like Dave Chase or something like that. Yep, Lilo. Uh, voiced Lilo in Lilo and Stitch, and played the girl from the ring in the American remake of the ring. <laughs> and the reason I bring those things up is because like this kid unironically has had like one of the most meaningful impacts on my life in terms of like media, considering Lilo and Stitch was one of my favorite Disney movies as a kid. And then like when I was in middle school, I saw the ring and it fucking traumatized me. <laughs> it took me years to get over that one. I saw that movie <laughs> when I was too young. <laughs> oh, that, that was yours. Uh, mine was, uh, Invasion of Body Snatchers, the remake. Oh yeah, that one messed that one messed me up with like the worm tentacle things. Have you seen it? Oh yeah, no, I, I, uh, I, with the ring, I could not be left alone in a room with a blank TV screen for just for months. <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> and then this same this same girl, uh, when I enter high school, <laughs> voices uh, the the protagonist of the first anime I ever watch, and 
it was all it was all down you know snowball from there <laughs> yeah um but okay to, to answer the second question of this whole thing do we think it's because this film is about change in, in particular over everything else that Miyazaki's done because this is mostly about this is what this story's message is about is this why this film stands out so much from the rest of his uh collection especially for non-anime fans because for some reason this one film has been like has been marked as like the greatest animated film of all time more than princess mononoke more than anything else he made or any other director made it's this film well and why i don't get that's the thing i always find interesting i don't know if i necessarily agree with the idea that it's like universally considered a great it's it's the most successful and what it's I'm the going, only one that what won i'm going Oscar. off of <laughs> I, I know but what, what i'm saying is like it's won a lot of awards. Mm-hmm. It's still the highest grossing film in Japan because he re-released it after Your Name because he couldn't handle being second place. I guess, I, yeah, I guess it gets re-released a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> re-released. Yeah. Thanks, G-Kids. <laughs> <laughs> Shinkai's just trying to, do, trying to make a living here. You know, picking on smaller directors. Yeah, uh, yeah I don't uh, think Shinkai's hurting. <laughs> <laughs> this poor, innocent millionaire. You're hurting him. Um, but yeah, no, you, you go on Mal. It's like in the top 20. You go... Like, any top animated film list on online it's going it's going to have it there it's going to be near the top like this thing is just universally praised and i'm just curious like what made this one be, be marked as that yeah well it's see it's one of those things where i think that all the people who say that uh probably aren't as deep into anime as we are legitimately oh, probably like i think i think i think part of it is that part of the reason spirited away is so big um, obviously globally and in Japan, um, but also in the West. I mean, w- winning an Oscar, which no other anime film has has done, um, other than di- other than the you know Disney partnership that you yeah, know that well, obviously let's just let's just let's just put that to the side for yeah, me because that's, that, that, that's that's accepted <laughs> and and that goes for yes. all Ghibli films after 1996. <laughs> yes, um, but for somebody who's never watched anime before, especially not like this this type of anime, um, who has no exposure to this. There is something that's just so magical about Spirit, Spirited Away um, in inviting you into this, like, new, crazy, new world, um, this new fantastic wor- fantastical world. Um, I, you know, it was my first anime, and, and I, I remember that being, like, my biggest takeaway with it. Like, so this is what animation can be. You know, I had that thought that, like, you know, before I watched that film, I, I hadn't even considered that that an animated movie could could look and sound like that. You know, um, it, it really like opened my eyes. And I think for people who aren't familiar with anime, it, it's it's got that kind of charm to it, um, where it's it, it's so fitting that this is a movie about a girl entering this whole new world because. <laughs> As a gateway anime, you know that's what it is. Like you, you feel like Chihiro. Uh, as you go into the bathhouse and see all these things for the first time, like you, you're right there in her shoes with her, um, and I think that that's a big part of the reason that it stuck with so many people that were fresh to anime, um, and for so many of us that did kind of start with Spirited Away, or maybe at least you know it was one of your first, uh, there was no going back from there. You know, like I was hook, line, sinker after that. Um, I did just I, I realized as, as you described that. But this film is just an isekai. Yep, that's true. Yeah, Spirited Away is my favorite isekai. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, just being transported to a whole new world. It's like, wait, that's sort of online. Oh my god, that's the title. Of, that's the title of the video. Spirited Away, best isekai. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, let's let's do that. Um, okay, then let me ask you one question here. Then, so you saw Brotherhood early on as an anime fan, yeah? Mm-hmm. That's still top five or so for you. It is, yeah, Brotherhood is. It's still in my top okay. five. Sort of, or not sort of line. Uh, Evangelion. I know it's kind of up there for you as well. I saw. I know you saw that early on. Is that still up there as well? Mm-hmm. Okay. Here, here's my question: Is Spirited Away in your top five animated films? It is not. Uh, about top ten. No. Fifteen. Fifteen. I would have to think about, but okay. Off the top the... of my head, I want to say that it's probably in that fifteen to twenty range. Fifteen okay. to twenty. Twenty-five for sure. For sure, 25. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the thing I just find interesting, because it's like, everyone who see who sees this film will praise it. But I, I don't know anyone who who says this is their favorite film. Or their fa- even, even from Ghibli's collection, or just favorite films as a whole. 
I find that interesting where it's like, it's such a great introduction film, but then it will knock, it'll be knocked down multiple, like, pegs. Meanwhile, you have something like a TV show, like Brotherhood, that like, no, you still say, like, it's still 350 anime later, still top five. Mm -hmm. Even though you've seen it, what, five, six, seven years ago? I just, I find that interesting. Yeah, no, it... Why is that? I think that, I think part of it has to do with the fact that, like, Spirited Away doesn't have a ton to say, you know? Like, it's it's not the most um, thematically rich work in the world. Like, it's I think it's far more about the experience of the film. Um, and that it's, it you know, it's a, it's a fantastic experience, but, like, it's... When you watch more anime, it's it's that kind of thing where it's like, you know, then then you get more into the stories that anime can tell, you know, um, and Spirited Away for me is more about like what 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 the medium can do with uh, with its structure and with its animation and sound. But like uh, from a on, a on a story level, like the deeper you go into the medium, um, like there there are going to be things that stick with you more. What you're getting at more is the idea that over time, you're going to find stories that more connect to you individually. Mm -hmm. Especially with animated films where they're more story-driven as opposed to this long, epic narrative of a TV show. That just That's why something gets spirited away, even though you will still admit it's there's very little flaws with the film. It just, but it naturally just gets lowered. Yeah, I think that I think that for somebody who where Spirited Away is their first anime and for somebody where it's their 100th, both of them will enjoy this film and and both of them might even rate it the same or whatever yeah, they'll both they'll both get the same experience out of it but exactly but the person where it's their first film i think will will get something else out of it you know in addition like an appreciation that and yeah that it's that like little bit of extra magic of of experiencing this type of work this type of animation for the first time that i think spirited away conveys beautifully and that's why i think that it's still to this day a fantastic okay i've said fantastic a thousand times in this video <laughs> I'll, 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 there, there's gonna be a little camera on screen <laughs> and why i think that's still to this day spirited away is a wonderful introduction to anime and i do now i do think it's interesting though that like i would be curious to see how many for people who got into anime five years ago or ten years ago how many of those people would say Spirited Away was one of the, you know, first five anime they saw? Versus how many people would say that who got into anime this year or last year? Yeah. Because it seems to me, like, r recently, like, I, and I, I feel like I can, like, tell this just being in the community uh, that the way, like, the avenues people take to get into anime has changed significantly to what it was when I first got into anime. That it feels way more seasonal driven and modern driven in terms of like what is bringing people in um yeah so like there, there's very little going back to the backlog exactly which is you know so i like i guess my question for you is you know do you think that you know it, it was spirited away it was a great intro for for us you know getting in when we did years ago but like do you think it's still a good intro for the new anime viewer today in 2020 i think it's a good introduction for what animation can be as a whole, not just anime anymore. I feel at a certain time it was like a great introduction to anime, but I feel like the way the community and the way the medium itself has changed in the last 20 years, it's not a representation of what the medium is and the community is now. I, I feel like it's like going back and watching Castle Cagliostro. That's not what Lupin is now. It's going back and watching, I don't know, a space opera from the 80s. That's not what anime is now. These are both impressive works, and you could basically really appreciate the time and effort and quality that's gone into them. But I do feel like there is something about this film that kind of transcends the medium itself at this point. That it is a representation of what animation can be, especially if you're someone who believes that the Disney model is the only model of this platform. And I think that's where it really shines. It's what it really stands out as. Um, this film, for me, is like remembering a dream. If that makes any sense, I'm not even sure. It's essentially going into a world that I'm not going to see everything. I'm not going to remember everything. I'm not going to even feel like I fully understand the rules of this world. But there is a comfort to it. There is this wonder, this fantasy in the mundane, in the everyday, in the slice of life, essentially. There is 
you know, it is beautiful. And of course, you can we say that with a lot of films with Batsakaga, but there's genuinely a beauty beyond just the physical or beyond the visual, I should say. Here, there is a there's something about this film that basically I feel beyond your language, you can understand it. You can pick up on this and you can feel that feeling. I think that is where this film is at its strongest. Maybe it's no longer the best anime film to basically be as an introduction, but I do feel it is a good introduction to animation, a good crash course, and what you can really convey with a bunch of paint and lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's well said. I I, I like I like what Boom. you said about the. Oh, that that felt good. I won't take that. I won't take that so hard. No. Well, sorry, I'm just really proud of myself. I said it so like. <laughs> uh, sorry, please continue. Yeah, I think what you said about um, it feeling like a dream is really apt. Uh, and for me, especially the return to it, you know that because like that's this this watch through for me was such a unique experience. Like. There's no way I'll ever be able to completely dissociate my feelings, my personal feelings for Spirited Away, like, from the experience of it, you know? Like, any time I ever return to this film, it, it's gonna send this wave of nostalgia over me, uh, just, just reflecting on, you know, how much the medium of anime has meant to me. That's kind of like that's kind of what Spirited Away represents in my head. It, it's it's about like what the medium has given me. That's that you know it makes me think of that. Um, it's a deeply it's it's a deep personal connection that anyone you know that that's a that's into this medium like we are has with your first anime. You know everyone remembers that. And even if yeah. even if you come to a point where like you know you you've grown out of of love for your first anime like you're always going to have that nostalgia for it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's fun it, I think it's funny that uh, just a few minutes ago, I said that Spirited Away was, you know, not in my top 10 or 15 or whatever anime films, and yet there's I can probably count on one hand the anime films that have meant as much to me as Spirited Away has. Um, and that's something that I'll always cherish. I, th I think that's a good spot to end this. Um, happy Halloween, Jack. Happy Halloween. One of the best holidays, mind you. Yep. Uh, now, I'm going to go and try to deal with my trauma from uh, Chihiro <laughs> in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And I'm going to avoid trick-or-treaters. <laughs> that, that's the real... Stay safe, that's everyone. The, <laughs> that's the real fear of this, of this holiday now. <laughs> right, thanks for watching, everyone. Have, have fun. And until next time, have a nice day.